We now turn to Russian propaganda and this war. Our guest to discuss this is Professor David Engels, who's been analyzing the rake's progress of Russian propaganda. Is the Russian spin on how this war is going according to plan purely for domestic consumption? No one else will believe it anyway? No, I wouldn't say so. Well, Russian propaganda, of course, as, as usual, is very complex. So at the first time, one of the messages were, this is only a police action, finally, so NATO shouldn't pay too much attention to it. Then, when they saw that this, that, that, that wouldn't really function, this, they, they switched to the uh, nuclear uh, aspect, rather mm. imposing and showing the danger of eventually uh, starting to become evolved. But there are, of course, also other aspects of this Russian propaganda that are designed for, for, for Europe. And one is, of course, to creating a rift within Europe, thanks, for example, to the anti-Polish propaganda, showing, for example, that there is some racism at the yeah. Polish border, and that is functioning very well, unfortunately, or showing that the Ukrainian defenses are all evil Nazis uh, trying to, 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 to act against European values and so forth. So it's very complex, of course, and it works still quite well, I would say. Now, but have you been surprised how Russia seems to be on the defensive in the information war uh, over this conflict? Uh, I mean, President Zelensky seems to have certainly beaten Mr. Putin in the, yeah, in the information um, stakes, hasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. This is, of course, due also to the courage of the Ukrainian people and, on mm. the other hand, to the obvious uh, fact that the Russian advance isn't as swift as it was uh, supposed. So it's quite difficult to sell this image of a war that is won. But we shouldn't forget also, on the other side, that that also plays sometimes in the card of the Russians. There are many people in, in Western Europe, unfortunately also among conservatives, who are quite um, positive about Russia, seeing in Russia and in Putin something like the defensor of the true Western civilization and uh, transforming this defeat into some act where the anti-US feeling of many conservatives can be played in order to show that Russia is the, the underdog somehow. Do you think the war has actually nullified this or is it far too early to, to talk about that, in that the, the actions of the Russian military, the aggression and so forth, it, do you think that might have nullified it? it might make, uh, for instance, conservatives in America, mm -hmm. Germany or France have a look at what Putin really is about in that his conservatism is there only on show. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's not actually real. Do, what do you think? Not yet, I would say. Uh, of course, this is a problem also of education degrees. So many people still believe Russia is this orthodox, uh, deeply Western country. And even if you show to them that mm. large parts of the country are already Islamized, that there are many Muslim Chechen fighters also on the mm. Russian side, they do not necessarily know that or believe that. But even with more intelligent people, there's the problem that unfortunately during these last years and last decades, there has been such a, a doubt or mistrust of the media that has been built up, sometimes also for very good reasons, that so that now people simply stop to believe what they see in the media. So even if war crimes are obvious, mm. they still think, well, yeah, either it's fabricated or probably the other side is as evil mm. as that. And it is very difficult to, to, to convince, of course, these, these, uh, these people by now. But you think that Russia's great success over the last 20 years of having hoodwinked the West had possibly less to do with propaganda and more to do with that classic old tactic of the KGB subversion and also downright bribery mm -hmm. in that uh, they spent millions and millions yeah. on, a on actually getting their people into the right positions and buying Western politicians. Do you think that that's been a the key to their success in having to put the West to sleep for a very long time, despite acts of aggression such as Georgia 2008 and, of course, Ukraine 2014. Mm. That is certainly an important aspect. If you look, for example, at Gerhard Schröder, is one of the most well-known examples of a Western politician, more or less in the pay of the, of the Kremlin. So I would say that is certainly an aspect. The other one is that the Russians uh, understood very early and uh, very well that it was necessary to invest in media. So they built this Russia Today, mm. which is from a propaganda point of view brilliant because they sell information to a Western European public and exactly the, the contrary 
contrary to what is happening, for example, in Russia when it came to COVID, when they had this anti-vaccine stance in mm. Western Europe, whereas Russia is a quite pro-vaccine country. Mm. So there, there is certainly a, a big importance to this propaganda machine. But unfortunately, one of the most important uh, uh, aids of the Russian propaganda machine is the West itself and the more leftist, liberal, wokeist turn that the US, but also many Western mm. European states are, to, are, are taking. And so there is this, this sympathy uh, building up for everything that is not uh, US. Uh, and so that is, of course, also an important help, as many people say, think, okay, well, I'm not pro-Russia, but I'm certainly not anymore pro-US and certainly not under Biden. So that, that plays mm. also, of course, in the, in the hands of uh, Putin also. Do you believe in, now turning to Russian public opinion, the, the kind of opinion surveys that, that have been shown that was backing for this war? Can you really believe opinion surveys in a, in a country wh which is a dictatorship and in which there is so much fear among the public? And which, of course, there are now laws which say that if you're a journalist and you misrepresent <laughs> The, the Russian military, you can go to jail for 15 years. <laughs> yeah, of course, we should take that with a certain distance. But on the other hand, I think that Putin would not have started that kind of war if he wasn't more or less sure that mm. at least a significant majority of the population would back it up. Of course, we have to see how long that would take. A, a military action or a police action of some weeks, that is, of course, something very different than a war of attrition with serious economic consequences. But I still believe that Many, many Russians feel that it is somehow the, the mission of, of the Russian state to reassemble Russian territories and that there mm. is some form of metaphysical transcendent importance of the Russian state it is imbued with. And I think that many people are ready also to take over a certain number of sacrifices. Do you, if, but do you if, think uh, that kind of classic imperialist message is actually attractive to any part of Western public opinion? Western public opinion, I'm not sure, but Russia, but I Russia, think of course, it, it, yes. it works. I, I, I think that at least partially, this is still something many Russians cling to. It is, it is their, their identity. We have to think uh, or to notice that Russia is not necessarily a European state. It is probably a culture, civilization of its own, with its own law. And if they have anything that defines them, it is this idea of not being a nation state, but a world mm. in some, some way. Could this propaganda be undermined by the economic chaos, the propaganda mm -hmm. aimed at the Russian people? Could it be undermined by the economic chaos? Or will the economic chaos not entrench the position that the evil West is actually hitting Mother Russia and we have to stand up? Yeah, this is indeed uh, a big risk. I mean, look only at the first years, at least, of the Second World War, when also the fact that mm. the UK was also under a lot of economic strain didn't break the public opinion, but rather uh, made them even more, more stubborn. So that could certainly ha happen also with Russia. And we shouldn't forget that most of these economic sanctions cannot really uh, function as long as China is there, ready to supply uh, Russia with everything they need in exchange for Mm. For, for strategic uh, uh, goods and raw materials. So uh, it, it is not really, really a boycott mm. that would function. To the contrary, it could rather help to really generate some form of a strong Eurasian bloc that is detached from, from, from the rest of world economy. Do you think Putin's success has been based on projecting the West in Russia as the aggressor and Russia as the victim and he has been using the experience of the 1990s mm -hmm. as, as the example. And that's, the, that's, his, that's his policy, which has resulted in public opinion uh, turning very much against the West. Because in the 1990s, you had a situation in which Russia did collapse economically. Okay. That, 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 that was definitely the case. Mm -hmm. Whereas under Putin, at least in the first half of his reign, it re-emerged, it, it recovered. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the public associate liberals and the West with a downfall of Russia and Putin with its recovery. Is that still holding strong? I think so. It is even holding strong in the West. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm following this situation very closely on social media. And when I think, uh, see how many conservatives, and not even conservatives, often also people rather from the left side, are indulging and enumerating all the errors of the West in not uh, opening their arms to Russia and trying to understand mm. Putin, but rather refused him. This created, of course, a narrative where, where uh, Russia is somehow the victim. And now this is 
is, uh, so to speak, the, the, the ultimate uh, proof somehow in, in their point of view. That's hmm. true. Yeah. Now, you think that Putin has got no option other than to continue this war. What I mean is that there may be a bunker mentality actually setting in, in that he can't turn back. Uh, and it's carpet bombing, perhaps, uh, use of chemical weapons, uh, before we ever get to cyanide pills. <laughs> yeah, that, that might be, unfortunately, indeed, indeed a risk. I mean, uh, Russia is not a monarchy where at least the monarch has a secure succession or where he has some form of interest of, of leaving, of, yeah. of, of uh, uh, giving the country to a successor in more or less a good state. It is a dictatorship without an assured succession. And so uh, Putin knows very well that if he doesn't win this war, then it will be, then, then his life is probably at, uh, at stake. There might be some palace coup, some form of assassination mm. plot or so. So he hasn't any interest in, in finding a, a calm solution or some form of compromise, but uh, his interest is in surviving. And he knows that if he doesn't win this war, then he won't survive. So he is, he is induced by this situation potentially to gamble. And I can't really see how um, this war or how he would be able to, de to, to present to the public uh, a, even a stalemate as a success. Because it, it, it's very important to remember that in modern Russia, there is no succession mechanism, as there was in communist Russia. In communist, it was the Communist Party that governed, and the general secretary of the Communist Party could be replaced. Even Stalin, in the end, was deposed, uh, although in a particular <laughs> way. <laughs> but, uh, but, nevertheless, but this now yeah. in Russia is totally Im impossible. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is uh, a problem. It, it's, uh, so... If Putin, the only way of getting rid of Putin is probably to eliminate him. I fear that uh, this is something Putin realizes also very strongly himself, and that is why I would expect, or that, that the, 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 there may be a vast possibility of, of consequences. I would have dismissed two weeks ago as absolutely uh, exaggerated, but now, after this quite unexpected invasion and after the turn it is taking for the moment, I wouldn't mm. exclude any uh, outcome of that. And as, yep. as, and, and as Putin yep. himself uh, is now with his, his back to the wall, everything could be possible. One last question. I, I saw today a story that Putin is furious that he was misled by the intelligence. Is this perhaps not Putin trying to somehow find scapegoats for what's going on? Uh, <laughs> I've, you know, to, to try and eliminate any opposition internally? Is that you that, think? Th that could be a, 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 a possibility to show also to the other oligarchs and members of the elite that he is still in control, that he is still capable also of uh, dismissing one or the other person and also of testing still the limits of his power and to see if people are, are, are still behind him. So that could be uh, tactics. But uh, Putin's life depends on the outcome of, of this war. So mm. the, the tension is, ma is mounting, growing and I can't see any positive outcome to that war. Either Russia wins, and then that's really the end, you could say, of, of, of peace in Europe with, with disastrous consequences possibly. And of course it means isolation uh, of Russia too. Isolation of Russia, but also a huge political danger to, 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 to the West, or Russia uh, is defeated, and in that case it mm. could even entirely collapse. So yeah. both po possibilities are extremely unsatisfactory from our point of view, I would say. So the stakes couldn't be higher. Professor David yeah. Engels, thank you very much for joining us here on World Today. Thank you very much for your invitation. Thank you. That's all from World Today. Next up, we have Militaria with Maciej Mikos and then the news service on the hour. Stay with us on TVP World.